Welcome back. And just an update for you, Lorraine and Maxie are both doing really well together. Great to see. Now we're here with our Basenji, Chloe. Now Basenjis have got this very short coat and they've got a very tightly curled tail and a lot of wrinkles on their forehead and almond shaped eyes which is what gives them that sort of perplexed about life look. They also have an unusual shaped larynx which explains the unusual noises that they make. And if you want a dog that doesn't smell, this dog is for you. It's a survival thing. In Africa, where there are loads of predators, it helps not to have a body odour to attract them. Hmm, it all makes sense to me. <laughs> well, today our vet Jeff visits Mandy, a cat with a bit of a problem. Hi, meet Mandy. She's a lovely old Burmese girl and she's got a few problems. So I'm going to take her in and let's meet her mum, Lynn. Lynn lovely. and Mandy have been close companions for 15 years. Mm. Well, this is Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hi, Jeff. How old is she? She's 17 years old, Jeff. 17, so that's quite an age, isn't it? And, and she's getting just a little bit frail, isn't she? Because she's got two problems. She's a diabetic and she's also got renal failure. So that's a real management issue for Lynn, trying to uh, get some good quality of life uh, for this little girl. And she's been at the clinic the last couple of days, just came home last night, and that's why you can see she's lost a bit of fur, she's had an IV line in. In order to get a full picture of how Mandy is doing, like any diabetic who is on twice daily insulin, I'm going to take a blood sample to measure her blood glucose or sugar levels. Take a needle. Just hold her ear, find this little ear vein here, a quick little prick like that. Come in with my little glucose meter and suck up that blood. Good girl, stay. <laughs> That's good. Okay, now we wait one minute and then we'll get that result. Good. She was good, wasn't she? Yes, yeah, she was. It's a bit annoying, but it's, <laughs> it's not a big deal. It's miserable, isn't it? Hmm? Yeah. What we're hoping for is a nice, normal blood glucose reading. Be a good girl trying to manage the insulin demands of an elderly cat who's also got renal failure is a real challenge. So uh, you're doing a great job. So there we are, she's high. That's disappointing, Lynn. That's not what you were hoping for. I think um, we've got plenty of room to move because after all, we have cut her insulin dose back and uh, we just need to reinstate it back to where it was. And I'm sure that we'll pull uh, her blood glucose back to a more normal level. So has she eaten today? Yes, she has. She's had, um, had wet food this morning and, and I think she's had dry food also. OK, so she's eaten quite a reasonable yes, amount. Has. I mean, that could explain why her blood glucose is quite high, because she was feeling better. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, don't be too disheartened. Yeah. No, or just swings and roundabouts. So we're going to have to give Mandy her second insulin injection of the day a little ahead of schedule to help level out her blood glucose. Good girls. Yeah. So here's this little auto pen contains the insulin that um, Mandy's on. It's really easy to use, so we just dial up two units on this little dial here, take the cap off the needle, ultra-fine needle, so cat barely notices it. And then I'm just going to give her this little injection, just part the fur there, place the needle into the skin like that, press this little lever, try and hold the needle just for a sec so that that insulin gets moved under the skin, and then out. Hey, wasn't she good? She's so well behaved, wasn't she? She used to that. <laughs> yeah. Cats with renal disease and cats with diabetes drink excessively, and an important part of monitoring how well Mandy is doing is measuring her water consumption. And that is something that Lynn is doing on a daily basis. Hey, there we are, old girl. Well, we'll just let you go. I think you've had enough poking and prodding for one day. Well, we've brought her um, insulin dose forward a few hours, so this evening's dose has already been given. And the next dose, it's important that uh, we check her blood glucose again. And from there, we'll get an idea just how much insulin uh, we need to give her. But I think she's going to need to come back up, isn't she? I think so. Mm. So just like with humans, when her blood glucose gets high like that, she feels really miserable. But I think she's starting to feel better already, that uh, insulin dose and something to eat. Yes, I she's agree. She's looking a bit chirpier, isn't she? And just an update for you, Mandy's doing really well, but Lynn is keeping a close eye on her. A good reminder that if your pet's behaviour does change, it pays to get it checked out. There could be help available. 
absolutely. Well, despite the weather, Chloe seems reasonably keen and energetic today, which is very characteristic of her breed. They are an energetic dog, and they've got an amazing style of running. It's almost like a gallop, and it's pretty cool to watch when they're going flat out. We'll see if she'll do it for us. Are you going to go for a run? Yeah. And she's off. <laughs> well, clearly Chloe is very well looked after, but unfortunately that's not the case for all animals. But that's where the SPCA comes in. The SPCA often finds animals in the worst of conditions, like Gizmo, who was one of 12 Border Collie dogs and pups. When he came to the SPCA, he wasn't used to human contact. However, after time in foster care with a family with a mature dog, Gizmo found a new home. SPCA branches are reliant on donations and support to keep their work going. Every year the SPCA hosts Cupcake Day, where members of the public bake cupcakes, sell them and donate the money made to the local SPCA, while businesses can consider corporate sponsorship. For more information, go to the website. After the break, it's fascinating and just a bit gruesome. Jeremy finds out what a veterinary pathologist does 